on the phone. It's a pleasure to welcome to this program Nicole Sandler. She is the host of Radio or Not at RadioOrNot.com. Uh, fresh off of her show, which is yeah. uh, 10 to noon. And uh, conveniently, um, uh, ours goes uh, for another 20 minutes or so, so we can have you on. Uh, Nicole, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me, Sam. It's good to talk to you. So yesterday I played this video of uh, the Allen West Town Hall where uh, you were taken out of the meeting because you were asking questions of him. And then uh, I guess this cop, I don't even know if he was on duty, decides he didn't uh, like the fact that you had a problem with him uh, manhandling him, and he decides sort of randomly to arrest. Well, tell me the story. Um, you know, it's weird, and probably the, the video you played is the one that this right wing uh, member of the audience shot, which doesn't show uh, the, the, the audio. Um, if you want, I mean, I can play it, but it won't translate well. I've got it posted at radio or not dot com. Um, so you can see it. He, you know, it was it was billed as a town hall meeting. It wasn't a town hall meeting. It was a presentation and a speech. He was, um, we weren't allowed to to ask questions. You had to write your question down on a card, and then Alan West staffers uh, went through them, decided which ones to ask him, and then he, you know, gave his right wing talking points in lieu of answers. So, um, uh, so he was asked a question about Medicare, and he gave that, you know, bowl about. Oh, you know, we're going to let the free market uh, handle it. And I, I, I shouted out something to the effect. And I was sitting second row center. He knew I was there. He could hear me very clearly. Um, I said, how is privatizing Medicare um, protecting it for future generations? How does adding a profit motive to it make it more efficient? I said, and, and what insurance company is going to uh, insure a 75-year-old person with obesity, high blood pressure, and diabetes? That's the answer. I want the question I wanted to ask because I don't care if you have an eight thousand dollar voucher or, or a, you know, a fifty thousand dollar voucher. No insurance company, for profit insurance company, is going to write that policy and insure that person. Right. Of course. Um, yeah. So while I'm trying to ask a what I believe is a real, legitimate, important question, um, I was I was ejected from the meeting. I was told by one of his brown shirts, "You need to leave." And a brow, uh, sorry, a Fort Lauderdale police sergeant pulled me out. And um, from the video you saw, I mean, you, the video you had didn't show my full question. It just had me shouting like a, a maniac, which is not what was going on. Um, uh, you do hear me, t t I think, telling the cop who was manhandling me uh, that I wanted his name and badge number. Right. And, right. And um, he said, whatever you need. And then he said, now you need to leave. And I said, fine, I'm leaving. And, and as I was saying that, he started pushing me. And I said, get your hands off of me. And as I continued protesting and telling him to get his hands off of me, he said, that's it, you're under arrest. So, you know, in the police report, he wrote, and I don't, I don't have it up right now. Um, let me see if I can find it. He wrote something that, to the effect of that I was continuously pushing him Wow. Really? If that wow. He case. really should have taken a look at the video that I saw because uh, he is going to have uh, some some fairly significant problems if uh, if he signed that report, because uh, yes, the did. video very clearly and, and you know, uh, you should probably get somebody to sort of take a take a copy of that video, because that video very clearly uh, it never cuts away uh, from your exchange with the uh, with the cop. And it, it clearly, clearly uh, shows that you, you never touched the cop, that uh, yeah. he, was, he was just pissed that you were, you were you're attempting to videotape his, uh, his response to the, the badge and the name. You're absolutely right. You know, he was pissed that I talked back to him, yep. that I dared to challenge his, his badge and say, you know, get your hands off of me. Yep. But he yep. did sign, not only he wrote the, the report, I'm trying to find it right now, uh, where he said that, um, you know, the, the suspect continue, you know, um, hold on one second, my phone's right, it's, it's a crazy time. Um, I'm, 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 I'm trying to find it as we speak, so here it is. Um, okay, here's, here's his probable cause affidavit. Arrested was in a town hall meeting for Congressman West when she became very disruptive and loud interfering with the meeting. Her behavior caused... Um, 
people to question the, the Medicare proposal. Yes, exactly. Her behavior caused many of the audience members to enter into a verbal altercation with her that threatened to become physical. I instructed defendant to leave the property no less than a dozen times. Um, that's not true. Uh, he did a few times, but it was not more than a dozen times. Defendant kept stopping, refusing to leave. Uh, no, because I said, I'm, I'm going. I'm out of here. Um, and as I attempted to escort her out, she became physically aggressive with this officer, pushing me several times. Wow. Defendant was finally placed under arrest. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Uh, well, I that thought. guy, that guy better, uh, I hope he has uh, Google and uh, we'll see a nice video of himself uh, not doing that. So then, yeah. so, so, um, and the video follows you out, um, uh, out of the building uh, and uh, the guy's getting a little bit, uh, he was starting to squeeze your arm a little bit. I'm not quite clear as to why, but, uh, and yeah. then what happened? You were maced in the prison? Yeah. Uh, you know, Sam, you, you know, we don't know each other that well, but you've heard me. I, I have a big mouth. And I'm sorry, the way they treat people who have not yet been arraigned, they've been accused of a, jo- of a, of a crime of some sort, they've been arrested, but have not yet had a day in court. And I, I was under the impression that there's some pesky thing like a law that says um, that, that, uh, that suspects are presumed innocent until proven guilty. Well, I'm not exactly um, sure what you would be presumed. What, what I mean, what what were you arrested for, for for being um, physical with the cop? No, that was that was the description. The actual charge is trespass after warning, for wow. which I uh, uh, they they um, it was a twenty five dollar bond. Wow. Whopping twenty five dollar bond. Yeah. So, um, but I'm not only talking me. I'm talking about the other women who were in this cell block with me. Uh, they treated us all like dirt. And so uh, to, I'll give you the short version, which basically is there were four of us who were left in this area when others were taken out to see the magistrate. And they wanted to clean the, the, the cell block. And so they put us in one of the cells that wasn't being used to house prisoners. Now, these cells are about maybe at its widest point, seven feet by 10 to 12 feet. And I'm probably being generous there. Um, and they put three people in each of these, um, three people one of them on, on sort of a cot and two on these inch thick mattresses on the floor. I got the one next to the disgusting toilet that doesn't look like it's ever been cleaned. It was lovely. Um, and, and so they put four of us in one of these cells that wasn't being used because it was being used to store at least 50 of these mattresses piled. Right. And they just stuck us in there ostensibly while they were cleaning the outside area. But then they forgot about us and left us in there for at least an hour. And when the door finally opened and I said to the guard, um, what did you forget about us? He said, yeah, that happened or, or something snide like that. And I said, you know, I think you owe us an apology. And he went, oh, yeah, I apologize. And I said, no, seriously, no, we're human beings. You lock us in this storage room where there's no air circulation. You, I, you really owe us an apology. And he said, oh, yeah, you want an apology? See upstairs, cell number one, get in there. There's your apology. You get all the air you want by yourself. And he locked me in there in solitary confinement for at least three hours. And when, then when they finally came in, like, with lunch, and I said, can I please get out now? He said, no. I said, please, I'm really, really sorry. Can I please come out? No. And so he gives me my lunch. You know, he, they, they crack open the door a little bit, give me my lunch, and then it just slams shut and locks. And about a minute later, it opened again. And I thought, all right, maybe the guy does have a heart. And, he le- and I, so I stepped out. I sat on the top step right outside the cell. I didn't even go downstairs where all the other women were sitting at the table. Um, and and he, he saw me and he started screaming, get back in the cell. And I said, no, please just let me sit here. And, and he said, are you disobeying an order? Get back in the cell. And as I started to protest again, I said, no, please let me sit here. Uh, he, he starts spraying the mace in my face. Oh, jeez. Oh, uh, and I mean, I'm sure I screamed. Um, uh, I, I understand that they videotape constantly have tape rolling in these uh, prisons. So, um, you know, they better have preserved that tape because um, uh, because I, I believe I have a lawsuit there. Wow. I think I've got wow. a few lawsuits right now, actually. The way I was treated is, is so, I mean, I don't know if you've ever been maced. 
No, uh, not uh, not by not by anybody who wasn't a loved one. Okay. Well, um, let me tell you, it's nasty. I mean, it. My eyes burned. They felt like they were on fire. I couldn't open them. I couldn't oh, see. Please. I couldn't see the you know the metal sink in the room. And then the, you know, I, I guess I stumbled back inside the cell, to, so he would stop macing me. And um, and it wasn't just like a shh. It was shh. I mean, he all over my eyes, my whole face, in my mouth, up my nose, in my hair, um, to where what I found out later, they had to move all the women from that cell block into another cell block wow. because their wow. eyes were burning. Um, and then, you know, I started screaming, I need a doctor, I need a doctor. I'm screaming and crying and uh, probably blood curdling screams. Um, then they finally escort me to like the nurses area and they, so you know how they washed out my eyes? by holding my head under a running faucet. So now, not only do I know what solitary confinement feels like, I think I know what waterboarding feels like. It's, you know, they're holding my face under there, and the water's going up my nose, in my mouth, and my eyes are burning. I mean, this whole thing was, was unbelievable. I'm, I'm just still shocked by what, what happened. I still, I mean, it's surreal. It, it, I, it really is. It is stunning when you compare what you know that that suddenly. Uh, I mean, let's let's just for the sake of argument assume that you were being disruptive. Uh, let's stipulate that for a moment and just compare that to the scenes that we saw over uh, in 2009 over the health care bill. Uh, and I don't recall anybody ending up maced. I don't recall anybody being arrested at these uh, um, at these town hall no, meetings. It's I, stunning. Not even not even escorted out. They were allowed to stay there with all their, yeah. um, you know, instructions on how to disrupt and disturb a town hall meeting. Well, it's Remember, true. I mean, there was absolutely, uh, they, we, they're, they're, they're public, uh, um, people have posted online these, uh, yep. these memos on how to disrupt a, a, a town hall meeting. And uh, it's pretty stunning, uh, Nicole. And, you know, uh, I, uh, I'm sorry you went through this, and I hope that... Um, I hope that you get a, a, a lot of uh, opportunity to tell your story. Uh, thank you. Um, I do. And I think I'm going to be on uh, Chank Uger's show tonight Great. on MSNBC. And, um, you know, as I explained, look, I, I told I just on my show and by the, the podcast will be up. The video archive is, is probably already there um, on my website at RadioOrNot.com. And I spent the first 90 minutes just from start to finish uh, you know, consider it my deposition, explaining exactly what happened. Um, but look, Sam, you and I know what it's like to invite people on your show, and then they say, oh, "I'm sorry, I'm tired, I'm da da da." So I, I am doing shows because I, I you know, I, I know what it's like to be turned down, um, and this is what we do. So well, yeah. I appreciate your coming on, and uh, I'm really glad that you're getting your, your your story's getting out there. I mean, both in terms of, um, you know, obviously. What happened to you uh, in a specific way, but also uh, it brings more light to what's going on across the country in terms of, you know, uh, both in terms of the the your points to be made about uh, Medicare and this uh, Ryan proposal, and also, frankly, the, um, the 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 lack of coverage and the sort of the 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 lack of. Um, of seeing this as a legitimate protest on behalf of of uh, uh, of uh, of the people. I mean, um, you know, Republicans uh, only seem to care about the Second Amendment, uh, not so much for the First Amendment. So maybe you should have right. brought a gun. Uh, no. <laughs> See, that's that's just not how I roll. I hear you. Well, Nicole, I appreciate it. The show, uh, radio or not dot com. You can go see uh, live every day, 10 to noon, Eastern, and uh, podcast available at radioornot.com, as well as the, uh, as the video podcast, I guess. Uh, yeah, it's video file, whatever. Nicole, thanks, <laughs> thanks so much Sam. again.